Okay, this is uh, chapter three, video six, where we're gonna go over some truth tree tests. The simplest test we can do with a truth tree is a test for consistency. That's essentially always what you're doing when you create a truth tree. You're testing for the consistency of the formulas you put into the trunk, whether that's one, two, three, or more formulas. The tests for validity and entailment are also tests for consistency, but we set up the trunk in a particular way for the validity slash entailment test. We'll see that in just a minute. So to take a quick example, here's a set of three formulas. If we want to test it for consistency, all we need to do is put all those formulas into the trunk of the tree and then do the tree. So let's do it. Now, unfortunately, all three of these formulas are going to branch. The biconditional branches into two stacks. Since I hope to avoid writing those stacks repeatedly, I'm actually going to do that one first. As you know, it doesn't really matter, but this might be a little more efficient. So the biconditional, as you can see with the rule set on the right hand side, branches into one stack with the subformulas as is, and the other stack with the negations of the subformulas. And I think whichever formula I decompose next is going to cause some branches to close, so I'm not sure it really matters which one I pick. I'll just start from the top. So I need to decompose M arrow hook N on both the open branches. As you'll recall, and you can see in the rules on the right, that's going to go to the negation of the antecedent branched with the consequent as is on both of those, and looks like we can close that branch there. Now what remains is the disjunction in the third formula there. We need to decompose it on all of the open branches like that. And then if we read all the way up the branches, we see we've got M and not M there. No contradiction on the second branch. We've got M and not M there. We've got K and not K there. No contradiction on that second to last branch, but we have K and not K there. So we wind up with a tree that has at least one open branch. So we have an open tree. So the set is truth functionally consistent. Now the truth tree tests for validity and tailment are equally as simple as the test for consistency, because they are essentially just a test for consistency. You may recall that one way of defining validity is that the set consisting of the premises plus the negation of the conclusion is inconsistent. Same thing goes for entailment. A set entails a target if and only if the set consisting of the original set plus the negation of the target is inconsistent. Hence, our truth tree test for validity and entailment. We put all the premises or members of the set into the trunk of the tree, and then we put the negation of the conclusion or target into the trunk of the tree. Then we do the tree. If the tree is closed, that set of premises plus negated conclusion is inconsistent, and the argument is valid. If that tree with the negation of the conclusion or target stays open, then it is possible for all the premises to be true and the conclusion false. That's why we put the negation of the conclusion or target in. Then the argument is invalid and the entailment fails. Let's see two quick examples. So we've got an argument on the left and its corresponding entailment claim right next to it there. To set up the tree for testing either validity or entailment, since it's exactly the same test, all we do is we put the premises slash members of the set in the entailment into the trunk of the tree, like that. And now we just need to remember that we need to take the negation of the conclusion slash target. So technically, what we would do is put in hook, hook, U, and then we would probably very quickly decompose that just to U. 
But again, since we allow ourselves to hide the double negation step, if you're careful, since the conclusion here is hook u, and we need the negation of it in the trunk of the tree, we could just remove the hook. Now we do the tree for this set of formulas. I'm going to decompose the conjunction there first, so we get S stacked with R. Then I will do the conditional next, which gives us not R on one side and T on the other. Closing as soon as possible, we've got an R not R there, so we can end that branch, saving ourselves some work. Now the next thing we need to do is decompose the third formula in the trunk. That is going to branch into the negation of its antecedent and its consequent as is. Now we have to decompose this negated conjunction, which is going to branch into the two components negated. And if we read all the way up our branches, here we've got a not S and an S. Here we've got a not U and a U. Now the rightmost branch stays open. So that means that the original set in the trunk is consistent. But because that contained the negation of the conclusion slash goal, that means that the argument is truth functionally invalid and that the entailment fails. Remember what we're doing here is we're trying to see if there is a way to make all the premises true and the opposite of the conclusion true. That is, all the premise is true and the conclusion false. That's why we take the negation of the conclusion slash target. And since the tree is open, it is possible to do all that. Make all the premises true and the negation of the conclusion true. That is, all the premises true and the conclusion false. So we get invalidity and failure of entailment. And here's another example. Whether we put this in the form of an argument or in the form of an entailment claim, we're going to test it in the same fashion. We take the premises slash members of the set and put them in the trunk as is, and then we take the conclusion or target and put its negation into the trunk of the tree. So take not B or not E, put that whole thing in parentheses, and negate it. Now we're ready to test this. If it closes, the argument is valid and the entailment holds. If it stays open, the argument is invalid and the entailment fails. So we've got two ways to go here. We'll just start with that conjunction and stack it, but this negated disjunction will also stack and since both, of the, since both of the disjuncts in there have hooks on them, we'll hide our double negation steps and just go straight to the stack B and E. Now we have two conditionals we need to decompose. Let's take this one first. It's going to branch to the negation of its antecedent and its consequent as is. That branch closes because of the not E, E. Now we need to decompose this on the remaining open branch. We're going to get the negation of its antecedent. So again, hiding a double negation step, that takes us straight to D. And the consequent as is on the other side. And we've got D, not D on that branch, and not A, and way up the top near the trunk, the A. So all branches close, closed tree. That means the set consisting of the premises and the negation of the conclusion is inconsistent. But the real point is that means that this is a truth functionally valid argument and the entailment holds.
So all you need to remember when you're doing validity entailment is to take the negation of the target or conclusion. Hope that helps.